Hi guys, Keith Thurgmer Farms. It is now the second week of June, 2020. I'm still hobbling around, but out in the tomato patch today. As you can see around me, it's kind of hard to see. I've got the sun like right there in my eyeball. But this year, instead of doing the uh, full center leader uh, lean lower method, we're doing field tomatoes. And for this, we're doing the Florida weed method. So let me show you how we're doing it. Yeah, please excuse the fact that I really need to mow out here. Actually. So, for my field tomatoes, I planted those a couple weeks ago. And what I did is I burned little individual extra holes in my fabric to put posts in. So, what I did was every fifth plant I either dropped a T-post or one of these little wood posts. I picked these up, they're little hardwood stakes. They're only about four foot long, so I'm only getting about three foot out of the ground, but they should at least get my trellis in starting. These brandy wines actually stand up really well on their own, that's why they have not even been trellised yet. So what I tried to do was a T-post, go down five plants, so we got one, two, three, four five and we got a wood post that's down about a foot deep or so and then we go one two three four where they're mixed together and five and then we dropped another t post and we continued that all the way down did the same thing over here this area that i've already got a couple strings on which i like i said is doing the florida weave so we've started weaving them you see that twine in there. We got one, two runs so far. Where I'm just trying to capture as much as possible in towards the center and get them tied up to where they're not on the ground. That's my main goal with this. So far it's looking pretty good. I mean, I've got a few that are trying to get away. Maybe they just have to cut them off or just go ahead and weave them through to the other side but these ones and the ones behind me doing about every six inches to start with need to be tied again because if we look down at that same line they're up above that mark all the way down now tying them's pretty easy pretty simple hey look there's some cherry tomatoes forming right there but the trick is How to get the line in there because these are all my slicers over here and they're starting to come in too which is nice I'm a little late on my tomatoes this year but yeah like i say better late than never so i've got these two done and since these brandy wines over here were being so cooperative and standing on their own i'm going to show you how to tie them the bright and it was in my eyes I need to mow out here because it kind of looked like a mess. But here is my uh, tomato tying rig. It's a uh, one gallon bucket, bale bailing twine, clamp to my pocket and the handle. Then I've got a piece of, uh, I don't know what this is, three quarter inch PVC, doesn't matter. It's basically a stick. Got my twine running through it. Then I tie off to my post. Always like to do three knots. Anytime I'm tying off to anything, that way I'm sure that it's on there. That might have been four because I really wasn't counting that well. And then comes the uh, tying part of it. Pretty much, we're doing Florida weave, so we're just weaving. We're gonna go around the front of one, and back and forth to where our stake's at. And we go up about six inches or so, whatever the height is that we tied that first one at, then we give it a yank. See how everything moves in? Get it nice and tight. And then we do one, two, three wraps. 
I found three to be best so it does not slip back. And that might just be the belling twine because everybody else I know that I've watched videos on just does two. Now again, this is the first year I've done this, but so far it seems to be working really good. So we'll just continue down the next one. Go outside, inside, outside, inside, and back outside. Come to our stake. Give it a tug. Wrap it. One, two, three. And again, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside. Wrap around our cheek post. Pull in. where I left off. I went around the post three times and I just do the reverse. Instead of being on the outside or the inside, I'm on the inside. I'm on the opposite side whichever way it is. So now again inside, outside. I, I stay on the same or on different sides of the tomato plants as I work. That way I just can keep repeating the same pattern over and over and over again. I don't get confused of where I'm at. So I work down one side and I come back the other. Do the same thing. Pull them tight, wrap it, one, two, three. One thing I have noticed is that uh, working over the stakes is a heck of a lot easier than working over the T-posts. Those are six foot T-posts driven about a foot in the ground. They're a little bit difficult to get over the top of while keeping the tension on there. I'll show you when I get to this last post here. I'm also going downwards as I go through trying to capture any lower branches but I leave it loose until I wrap around then I pull tight to get everything from the bottom to pull up so now I'm pulled around here if I let go they fall back so I got to keep my tension that's where my stick comes in I cross my stick over and hold it down across my string now I put my thumb on the top to hold the string loop over then take it back do it again. There's two. And the third time, that's three. Now I make a loop with my string, cross it across the strings I just tied on, pull an overhand knot. Now I'll repeat that exact same knot three times. Like I said, I always want to have enough knots to make sure it's secure. Actually, it leaves me with the loop. If I was going to go back like I did at the far end, I can just run with this. But since I'm up to the top now, I can go through, cut it off, and that row is tied. Now, can I show you around? Because I've got what I tied a week ago, what I just tied, and what I just put another tie on here earlier. So here are the tomatoes I just tied. See, we got a couple. Let me back you out there. There we go. Got two ties on them. And they're nice and brought back in to the center now. These weren't that bad to start with. A lot of times they get really bushy. Kind of like these guys over here are doing. These, like I said, were tied about a week ago. And you can see I did my initial runs. I did two runs on these about six inches off the ground and 12 or wrist yeah, about elbow I like to keep the first two down and then I'll start to space a little more and more as I go up and then when I hit the top of the post or the wood post I'm not sure what I'll do because I've never gone this far I'm gonna start asking people questions but here you can really see how the suckers are going out into the aisle I do know that there is a method where it's a modified Georgia weave and you actually take off all these bottom suckers below your first fruit cluster, which would be right there. There's one fruit right there. And that allows you plenty of airflow through the rows. But in my case, where I've got four foot walkways, I don't think I have any issue with airflow. I think I'll have really good airflow. Now over here, these were the ones that I was actually tying up while 
Hey, look. There's Scott's drone blade. That means he ran into something over by here the other day. He's taking Ariel out here for farm pictures. I think he hit... Oh, no, there it is. That tree house right there. He got blinded by the sun. He ended up in the sunflower field. But either way, this is one I've just tied up. And it looked almost as shaggy as the one next door, but not quite. But now you can see they're really good and in line and not really hanging down or anything. The one good thing is, since I'm mowing this and I'm basically taking the, keeping the deck like right here on this red line when I mow, that anything that gets out here, if it does decide to go nuts on me, it's just gonna get mowed, trimmed off anyways. It won't hurt. They'll heal themselves over. That's the great thing about tomato plants. They're really indestructible. And these babies are just moving back in. Fruiting like crazy. I cannot remember what these are. I think these are edox actually. They're edox or cherry bomb. But they've got some very, very nice clusters starting to form on them. I think I'm gonna have to be a little bit more vigilant on tying these so I can get everything in originally. Well, hope y'all like what you saw here today. Thought it was useful. Like I said, I mean, this is the first time I've done full on field tomatoes like this outside of cages actually using landscape fabric and a weave method and not doing single line. But the one thing I can really, really tell you is that I did one 90 foot row and another 90 foot row twice in the matter of 30 minutes. I mean, that would have been the whole high tunnel over there full if I was having to go through and pinch the suckers and twist. That would have taken me at least an hour easy to do that so i don't know maybe we'll save effort on harvesting because in there you can pretty much see everything and it's all hanging right there off the central vine we're out here you gotta dig and pick them out but who knows we'll see that uh hopefully later and also keep you informed when uh i reach the top of my post here it's gonna be very interesting because i'm not sure what to do probably gonna have to go and seek some advice from people because he's only three foot tall do you just once you're there you're there give up take hedge clippers trim them off on the top i don't know we'll figure it out kind of what you got to do sometimes so again hope you all like what we saw today if you did don't forget to like and subscribe thank y'all have a good day oh and i got one more announcement for you today i just finalized uh getting out to mother earth news fair in uh seven springs pennsylvania be doing two presentations this year one of them is going to be how to make a youtube video where i'm going to actually record a youtube video in the presentation edit it on the screen for everybody to see and then show them the finished product which i think is going to be awesome it's going to be great fun to do and also i'm going to be doing my uh, diy market garden where i'll just go around and show examples of all the cool stuff i've built out here i'll have it built into one nice beautiful presentation for everybody to watch so again like i said Thank y'all. Have a good day. It's hot out here. I'm going to go inside, jump in the pool. 